Welcome to the Roswell Business Podcast. Today we interview Steve Dodson, talking about his life, business, and wise words to live by. Enjoy. All right, Steve, thank you. Uh, certainly appreciate you interrupting your life and schedule to spend some time with us today. Um, I've, I've enjoyed over the years getting to know you a little bit more. I've known of your family growing up, you know, throughout my years. And then I was gone 15, 20 years. And then of course, uh, I think our first major interaction was Leadership Roswell. Um, the Alumni Association. Yeah, 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 exactly. And had the privilege of sharing a board with you and uh, all that kind of stuff. And so um, in recent days, we've done some projects over at, at your facility, which is just impressive anyway. Uh, I know you guys have been around for a long time and there's a neat heritage. So uh, looking forward to our discussion and our, Thanks, and no, our that's time. Thanks, been great so far. So. Um, tell me a little bit about, uh, about yourself. You know, where, where do you come from? What makes you tick? Uh, what's, what's the valuables there? Sure, like you said, I mean, you know our family. So, I mean, I, I grew up in Roswell. Um, went to school here, graduated high school here, uh, moved away for college, and uh, kind of one of those deals that I thought, well, I want to live where I want to live and then find a job. So I moved to Colorado Springs, thought that was a neat place okay. to go, and so I spent some time there and then couldn't find a job. So <laughs> wow. ended up at a job fair and got, got an offer to, uh, to work for a DOD contractor out okay. of a secret kind of facility at a little Air Force Base out there and jumped on it you know, first, first opportunity there. And so I worked in Colorado Springs at this little Air Force base for a couple of years doing okay. a top secret website. I had a secret clearance for a while. Really? Yeah. It was, That's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> it sounds a lot cooler than it really was. Yeah. Um, my suite mate used to go to sleep during work hours. You know, I mean, it was very, everything you may, might uh, say about a government job is you know, it was the it, same. It there. came. It came through in this deal. There were some really great people, okay. uh, but at the same time, I was in a hurry to leave, and so, uh, so, while I was still in Colorado Springs, I found a job uh, working at a. Uh, we installed laboratory software. Okay. So for five years, I traveled to labs across the United States. Anyone that did QA or QC, and uh, we did uh, we did laboratory software. Wow. And I was like the business analyst that kind of came in and said, you know. Let's look at this. How do you do this process? And then we try to make that process and there were reports and, and things like that for our system. So I uh, got to see a chunk of the United States, yeah. and, you know, a lot of the Caribbean as well, even that you don't think about it, but a lot of uh, pharmaceuticals have uh, hmm. plants down in the Caribbean. So I had to go to so Jamaica to and uh, yeah, <laughs> the Bahamas, you know, uh, some pretty neat stuff went to some bauxite, uh, mining in, in the Jamaica for oh, wow. three, four weeks at a time, you know, just working at a, at an, uh, they make aluminum out of bauxite. Okay. And so yeah, yeah. Really neat places. Got to see a lot of different industries and racked up quite a few frequent flyer miles. Yeah. You know? So I mean, it was, yeah, so I'm, I'm almost cool. a million miler on American. And if wow. I hadn't done the platinum challenge one year with United, I probably would have made it. But okay. uh, yeah, so, uh, but all that doing in Colorado Springs and then, uh, Got to thinking, you know, I don't have a wife, not married. What am I going to do? eHarmony.com was a thing at the time. So wow. I actually met my wife on eHarmony, which so is you're kind one of, of their success. Yeah, stories. one of their success stories. That was too <laughs> ugly for their commercials, but they sent us a bowl anyway and said, congratulations. But wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Really cool. You know, the story that was back when kind of there was a stigma still associated with that. I think it's probably okay. fairly common now. Um, but our first date was in Philadelphia. She okay. was living in D.C. at the time. I was working at Bristol Myers Squibb. Uh, had a big project that was going along, and so um, we. I'd go down there. I went through. Uh, I like to laugh. I had a. My idea was I really wanted to go to Australia. That was kind of like okay. my dream vacation. I had all these, you know, frequent flyer miles set up for that. And then I met my now wife, and five hundred thousand miles later. I was out of frequent flyer miles. <laughs> so yeah. We were married. Yeah. So, you know, it was really cool. But she's living in DC at the time and uh, got her to move down here. So, kind of after Colorado Springs, I came back to Roswell. Okay. And my dad said, Hey, why don't you start working for us? No, no, no. And, you know, a year or two later, finally kind of gave in. So, huh. I came back to the, the family business. And then it was right about that time that I pulled uh, 
Cali out of DC and uh, brought her to Roswell, New Mexico. So now, did she always grow up in a in a big city? Was this a big change for her? It was a huge change. Yeah. Okay. So she came from uh, from Portland, Oregon. You know, rainy, and you can't think of a better, bigger contrast to what Roswell is. Right. And then, uh, but she lived in Chicago, Philadelphia, DC. You know, all the big metro all big. areas. Yeah. And now Roswell, New Mexico. So yeah. Pretty funny. Yeah, real big metro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I have a wife uh, since 2006. We have uh, four kids. Okay. And right now, I mean, those, you know, the family is kind of the center of center of life. So. I was going to say, you do a lot in the community around kids and things like that. Well, baseball is kind of yeah. what we're. Yeah, that's yeah. been your, your so, claim to fame. In fact, you made a name for yourself <laughs> yeah. in that. Probably a little bit overboard on that, probably, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, we were, my, I was talking to my wife last night, and she was gone seven out of the last eight weeks. Wow. traveling for different things either gymnastics or baseball okay and so yeah i've been think i was gone five of those same weeks you know so it's busy yeah busy season yeah yeah but it's really enjoyable so uh my son's 11 and uh we've got nine seven and then a, th a three-year-old yeah so we've got them spread out are you done yes okay <laughs> <laughs> four four was the four, completion four is plenty yeah for sure gotcha. so you almost got you your own uh, basketball team Right. I was but, told uh, that, you, you know, to be a real good Christian, you had to have five. That was a quiver. So oh, really? have a full quiver. That was the, that we're was the we're one short, maybe. but <laughs> So you'd just be an average Christian. Average Christian okay. for now. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll, we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. So um, yeah, let's go back to uh, when you got to do the travel and stuff. Any really cool facilities or things like that that, you know, because you, you grew up in Roswell, right? Correct. Okay. So uh, that had to have been a really cool shift um you know for people that have never visited here uh we're a wonderful quaint community everybody pretty much knows everybody or knows what's going on but there's not like crazy big industry and and, mm -hmm. and things like that uh, we've got a couple of manufacturing plants but nothing like some of the cities you were too so right yeah lapino cool. might have been one of the you know the only comparison that might be um sandia labs actually had one of the best uh, okay. facilities so uh my side was really the tech side of things that's really what I did. Yeah. Um, so I was a database administrator and a programmer. And so, you know, I love doing that sort of thing. And Sandia Labs had the best of the best on everything. So okay. little New Mexico success story there is yeah. pretty cool. You know, a lot of, uh, uh, I was in the black and blue industry is what we called it more. So okay. it was more oil and gas, um, things where you'd wear a hard hat instead of, uh, you know, there's some pharmaceuticals, but that'd be a kind of a different setup. And I went okay. to them on occasion but most of the time I was in kind of the black and blue stuff. Okay. And so, you know, actual uh, assembly lines, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so did you do the big... programming for that? Yes. Uh, to make sure that they stayed operational? We'd and... install the system. Okay. And then behind the scenes, I'd tune the database to make sure it was performing correctly. Okay. Write the reports. And then if they needed something custom, then I'd write that too. That's really cool. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, actually. Did you did you grow up programming or was it something no, that you just kind of shifted I just into? No, something picked up. Yeah. In okay. fact, I said I'd never be a programmer coming really? out of college. So. <laughs> wow. But it was kind of fun to to learn. And then you end up traveling all over getting to do it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then came back to Roswell, and that was the funny thing because just you know, like Dad, what do you want me to do for the company? Yeah. Because my skill set doesn't really match. No one runs Oracle in in Roswell. Well, they may now, but at the time, I think maybe Yates was it. Okay. And so. Um, I did HR and uh, payroll and insurance, that sort of thing. And that was a square peg round hole for a long time. Understood. But did have a few, you know, big IT projects that we brought dots and lumber up to, uh, okay. up to snuff. They are actually running a really cool older IBM system that just mainframe system that they've okay. had since the eighties. Oh, wow. And we got that, uh, converted Pro over. Probably if memory serves, it probably had cases that was that old dusty yellow. <laughs> IBM we had tapes, forever. you know, the big tapes yeah. you know, for the backup and everything. They had you had a custom setup for them. And the first time I ran payroll, they had these big giant dot matrix printers that I mean, uh -huh. they shook the room when they uh -huh. went, you know. And the green bar paper, you know, goes back that I, far. I do because uh, <laughs> my dad uh, was a was a mechanical and sound engineer, and he he had worked for Lockheed and things like that. Saw the first computer ever mm -hmm. built. And uh, back in the uh, early '70s, and uh, of course that was the size of a warehouse at the time. Right. You know, now we wear our computers. Um, but point being was we had an IBM. That's why I asked because mm -hmm. I remember that yellow case and that 
you know, just that whole industry standard that they had. And then of course the dot matrix printer. So, mm -hmm. so they still had those when I came in, you know, and, and so yeah. I'm running payroll, my first ever <laughs> payroll that I've ever run. You know, I don't know anything about payroll taxes yeah. or anything else. I'm like, where's my database, you know? Yeah. And uh, I printed the checks upside down, right? So now they're on the wrong side of the, yeah. the print. And so there's no way to really fix that or avoid, you know, the people that have run, that had running the system forever is just, they knew how to do it. Yeah. And I came in and they're gone and I just screwed everything up. And I remember it took like all day and I was ready to quit, you know? <laughs> so we're off that, you know, and, and we've kind of modernized uh, nice. to a big extent there. And so that, that kind of gave me something uh, to fit in a little bit at Dots and Lumber. There so. was enough of a challenge in that. Oh yes. Upgrading all that tech. Nice. Yeah, so we did that in 2010. It was kind of the big push okay. on that, so. Wow. So um, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about that. Obviously, you've kind of transitioned there in our conversation too. Um, you uh, you do what now? Uh, all through Dodson? What's yeah? So that's... still the HR, the insurance, all the stuff that my dad doesn't really want to mess with anymore. Yeah. And Mark never did. Um, that's my brother. Yeah. And so I'm the IT guy also okay. over there. And so uh, we've got several projects uh, going on right now. One of them we just put in wireless. So we have an 18 acre facility, and we just bathed it in wireless. So now wow. the next thing is try to find out, you know, can we put printers on our um, forklifts and yeah. send reports to the forklift drivers or, you know, how can we kind of modernize from there? And, and so. keep efficiencies and things rolling the way it needs mm -hmm. to. Yeah, looking at some different IP radios, which is kind of a cool little option. You know, okay. you just call a certain person on the radio instead of broadcasting. Um, so we're still keeping things going. We're uh, putting in a saw right now that's a giant um, it's got lasers and everything else on it. And so, uh, kind of involved in that, but not as much, but you know, we're still trying to modernize our facility and, and improve where we can. So sure. So other than the, other than the big saw that we've got going right now, you know, other projects that come up pertaining to operations, kind of, I'm involved with those as well. Okay. So, yeah. So what are you guys, uh, you know, you've had a hand in some of the evolution of taking, you know, you guys have been around, what was the founding year? 1955 or 56, I've seen okay. both dates. So, okay. yeah. So, you know, well over 50 years, mm -hmm. you're pushing close to what, 60? My math's terrible, don't ask me Something to do like it. that, but anyway, <laughs> point being is you yeah. guys have had a long, long run, which is pretty neat, and you guys provide um, amazing materials too. So what have you seen, because you were brought in to kind of add a little modern twist Sure, and, and branding, I think, was another thing, too, that we hadn't okay. really done a whole lot of, and so we're trying to maybe scratch the surface of it now, but, you know, the history of our company is pretty important to us. I think, yeah. you know, you've actually done some projects for us. Uh, we used to have a sawmill in Rio Doso, right. kind of our, uh, it was called Hollywood at the time, so where the Foxworth uh, building is now. Oh, really? That's yeah. where it was? Yeah. Okay. And in fact, they still have a big uh, warehouse. It's like a, you know, just a roofed warehouse, and it used to say Hollywood Lumber on it. You can kind of still see the the letters I'll on I'll have to there. check it out when I'm back again. Yeah, and it's okay. the picture that, that uh, you did for us. That we in, did? Yeah, okay. in, the, in the metal and everything. So, you know, in the 50s or late 40s, that was Hollywood lumber. So wow. we like to incorporate, you know, what uh, my grandpa came over from uh, from Oklahoma. Okay. You know, and it's kind of like, if you can picture the, uh, what was the movie with the, the Clampets, you know, how they yeah, all Jay came over. Clampett, yeah, yeah. yeah. On Beverly the big, Hillbillies. They, yeah, Beverly yeah. Hillbillies, they put all their stuff <laughs> on the truck, you know, and that's more or less what actually happened. They had a portable sawmill and took one of our employees now, uh, Steve Phelps, his dad came with my grandpa. And wow. uh, yeah, they came to Cloudcroft and Rio Doso and thought, you know, let's use this sawmill. And so real entrepreneurial. Um, how crazy is that? Just family. Literally right? up and moved and said, well, make this our home and it stayed. Right, right. Wow. So you know, that's that's pretty cool. So we like to kind of focus on that, but we also want to, you know, bring it into things that we want to be modern as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we we were one of the first people probably in Roswell to get uh, uh, the uh, Plateau has a great uh, fiber optic internet service. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we were kind of on the leading edge with that. And then, um, you know, software as a service, we've run our business from uh, servers in Austin, and Portland, uh, that's wow. kind of where all of our stuff is run yeah. off of, and we've been doing that since I like said 2010. So, so that's on par with a dot matrix printer, right? 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> Funny, they still actually you can sell those on eBay for quite a bit of money. Really? Um, I guess they're 
they're valuable in certain industries anymore. But interesting. Yeah, they're hard to package up. I, I sent two. I sold two or three on eBay, and they were wow. very hard to get out of the building. So yeah. Glad to have them gone, though. Yeah, those were crazy beasts. Now today, if a printer is that large, you're doing like crazy murals and all kinds of stuff in HD color. And it better be making yeah. you money some way, right? Right, right. <laughs> that, that's cool. So tell me a little bit about uh, Dodson uh, Lumber. Uh, for those, you know, I've, I've been able to touch it a little bit, but most people uh, that I've at least spoken to over the years is like, well, that's kind of neat, a lumber yard, what is that, you know? Right, we're just that bit, pink you know, what, building what across do? from the wool bowl, right? Right, right. Yeah, that no one's ever really been in. Uh, and that's kind of by design. Um, we're wholesale lumber. Okay. So we don't actually have a, a retail floor. People can't come in and just buy from us. We don't even sell to contractors. And we probably tell people that probably about twice a week, at least. You know, yeah. it's a pretty fairly common mantra. Um, so we don't sell to the public. And we, we sell to the, to the bigger yards like uh, Foxworth okay. in town now. It used to be Roswell Lumber. So Maze if I go lumber. down and buy from these guys, a lot of times it's your... Yes, and okay. the McCoys. Um, okay. You know, some of the bigger companies have their own distribution, and so they only use us for, for fill-ins, but, you know, okay. we want to be good at that where we can. So uh, we have seven trucks, and we run those trucks. We try to keep them full every day, you know, seven loads going out. I'd say probably 75% of our business is in West Texas. Okay. So we wish New Mexico had more going on. Right, right. But it doesn't at the time. So, um, uh, so we send our trucks out, and uh, that's kind of what we promise is service. We're going to get it there when we say it's going to be there, uh, because we do run our own trucks, and okay. a lot of uh, competitors will run third-party deliveries, and that can work out. And it, you know, it can be the budget option for sure. Understood, because you're not in charge of when right. those guys get there and all that all the time properly. What about uh, the lumber itself? Do you guys harvest your own trees? Do you get it through other... I'm just, no, good I'm question. just curious no, about the industry. No, that's a good industry. question. Yeah, so uh, most of the lumber comes from the West Coast that we buy. Okay. Uh, it used to come from Canada also, but tariffs being what they are, you know, that, okay. that goes up and down. Uh, so anywhere where you could picture where there's lots of trees, even the southern U.S., like Alabama, Georgia. Really? Okay, but most of ours comes from Oregon. Okay. Uh, it's just kind of the way that freight works with the rail line. So we're very dependent on uh, BNSF, the rail. Oh, simply because of the rail, it mm -hmm. dictates. Wow. Okay. So you can put approximately four trucks worth of material on one rail car. Oh, wow. And so it's more economical freight-wise, and usually freight is the difference between us. That's our margin, essentially, okay. is freight. So if we can save on freight and buy, you know, get it in bulk, um, lumber has a market, which most people, including me, didn't realize, you know, uh, for a long time, but the lumber will go up and down. Okay. And it takes, let's say, uh, six weeks to get lumber from the West Coast on, on rail. Rail is a very slow and kind of frustrating process sometimes. So it's like buying lumber's futures almost. Interesting. Because you can buy it at this price and six weeks later, it's yeah, yeah. in a different spot. Wow. And so you're kind of hoping that it's in this spot when you've bought low, right? Yeah, yeah. So... The market's kind of tanking right now. And you guys but, uh, uh, literally have uh, your own right there on the property. We have a rail spur, yes. That comes right mm -hmm. in, huh? uh, at one point, we were the only rail spur. I think the one of the uh, ABC distribution or whatever the Budweiser okay. had one for a while. Okay. Um, but in Roswell, I don't know that there's many other rail spurs that are active. Yeah. So. Uh, we're a five car spot, which is not huge. Yeah. Um, so the guys that do frac sand, they'll do that in an hour, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we have a five car spot. And so uh, if the traffic is stopped over there at Garden, it's usually our fault. Gotcha. And with, the, with the rail deal. Getting loaded or unloaded. Yeah, dropping, and that usually takes quite a while. Up. So you might turn around and go the other direction. But at least people know that it's for good cause. Yeah, it's, it's keeping, keeping people employed for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. And when you say trucks, you're talking tractor rigs, right? Right. Yeah. So we have, uh, you know, 52 foot trailers there. Uh, we can get 60 foot lumber. Uh, okay. That's about as big as they make, you know, anything engineered. Um, just and by the way, the, the, what would that be used for at that size? For any kind of uh, house where you want to have like uh, no walls, you know, just a very open floor plan. So that's really becoming a big deal. Okay. Um, yeah. So the bigger spans are, are better. Okay. So they're all engineered that direction, but you know the the rails or the uh, the road system. Yeah. Really kind of dictates how big stuff can be made. 
Okay. So the, the mules would, would make it a hundred foot long if, if they could, but they have no okay. way to, you know, get around without oversized loads of being involved. So. So you mean you don't want to turn left at a red light and right, drive right. over all the cars? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. And, and our rigs are so big anyway. I mean, we've got, we've got some of the, you know, the, the bigger Peterbilts, uh, they're yeah. the nice, you know, 13 speed kind of deals. And nice. Yeah. It's like truckers, uh, you know, pure truck. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have any trouble with manliness no. in those moments, right? <laughs> no, that's for sure. <laughs> Go ahead and challenge me. I right? can't. I can't drive one of them. That's for sure. I used to back them up on occasion, and okay. the snake thing was. Everyone liked to laugh at me about that, and it's still that way. So, so that to is the uh, do you, you think Peter Bilt or any of those will eventually get to that self? Uh, because I just saw that Ford just released uh, a self backing up trailer system for docking your boat for. All I think that's more for people like us, you know, okay. the guys that we hire are so good at it. They do it all the time. Yeah. It's not an issue. They can get into just about anything. You know, it's really cool to see. Um, there might be self-driving trucks at some point, Okay. Uh, which, which necessarily wouldn't be a bad thing. Well, I know you're such a tech guy. That's why I brought that up. You <laughs> probably have looked at it and studied it and yep. very, very cool. So, uh, what, what does, uh, what does the future look like for, uh, Dodson and stuff like that? What, what are you guys? anticipating looking at i know you said that it's a unique uh ebb and flow you said right now it's been kind of blue below kinda i mean odd. you know just the stuff that's going on i think we were actually anticipating activities. a really good year um yeah. you know all the signs indicated that this was going to be the first year in two or three that things were really going to take off and then kind of the, the coronavirus hit and yeah. then now we're going back the other direction um, so we do kind of think that'll rebound at some point but yeah. oil and gas has got to come up in our industry too so yeah $30 a barrel or 24 today, I think I saw, it's not gonna cut it for- So that messes with wood in a big way. How, yes, how because does... people aren't building houses. They're not building apartment complexes. Okay. Hotels are a big deal for us. Uh, so Carlsbad has just been building like crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if we wanna look at New Mexico, good things, the Carlsbad Hobbs area yeah. has been a lot of business for us. Um, where does that go from here? You know, I think we need $50 a barrel, something like that. Okay. So. We're kind of hoping on that right, right. oil prices to come back up, but um, we have been getting involved. Uh, we've got a, a reload facility in Lubbock, okay. And so Lubbock gives us kind of the option where we have two railroads uh, competing, and so okay. oftentimes the Union Pacific is cheaper than the BN. So Roswell only has yeah, yeah. the BN, and so uh, with Lubbock we've got the option for both, and uh, we've kind of expanded there recently. Nice. So yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah. Well, very interesting. I wouldn't have ever thought about that, but it makes perfect sense that uh, because of the oil industry, it causes growth and buildings, and mm -hmm. that's where you guys come in. That's that's really crazy. We used to actually sell a bunch of uh, timbers to oil companies that would stack their pipe on it, and so okay. we have a, we have some intra entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, enterprising guys in our office that would get on Google Maps and find the big, cause you can see these things that they stack pipe on. Yeah. You can see them from satellites. Yeah. And there's a, there's a pipe yard there. Let's go to Midland and go find out where they're getting their timbers from, you uh -huh. know, and if you'd land that business and yeah, but that's kind of going away too. They're not doing as much of that anymore either. So, okay. Is but it just newer technologies and things. No, I think it's just, it's just the business has just been going down. Oh, okay. Down. So it's literally just industry it's related. It's been slowing down okay. now. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, uh, you'd mentioned before that you're, you're very active with, uh, uh, baseball and things like that. Um, was it just because of your kids? Is that what got you into that? Or were you a baseball player yourself or? So my dad started playing baseball. Um, okay. he actually, uh, pitched for Oklahoma state. Really? A while I never back. knew that. Yeah. So he was a little, uh, lefty and okay. uh, pitched for Goddard and played football for Goddard. Okay. And so, you know, he coached me all the way through and we had, uh, we had some success. My sister and brother and I at, uh, my sister played ball okay. for years and years, and uh, we all did well at the all-star level and went to California and had some really cool, you know, life experiences there. And so, uh, yeah, Noon Optimus Little League's been a part of our family wow. since. I think my grandpa actually was instrumental in getting some of those fields built years and years and years okay. ago. So, you know, we're we're tied in with the league yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty close. And uh, so I'm, I'm their president out there now, okay. uh, my last year. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about that in some ways because it is a lot of work, but yeah. it's been a great, great deal for us. And um, just to have, this would be Joshua's 12 year old season, uh, which is kind of the golden year if you're in Little yeah. League. 
And, you know, the coronavirus has kind of put that all on hold. We're currently on hold till May 11th. Right. So we're hoping that we can get a season in, you know. Yeah. But I don't know, all bets are off at this at this point. So. Right, right. I don't think any of us have a whole lot of surety on a lot of things for the time being, and, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. We've got a path that we got to follow. And, and you know, we're okay with that. Uh, it's, it's disappointing for sure. Right. But at the same time, we have bigger responsibilities. I think that's how we're kind of looking at it. Yeah. Um, so we've been playing a lot of uh, U-Trip baseball too. Okay. So uh, U-S-S-S-A, they call it U-Trip. Yeah. And uh, Sun's been involved with that. I've coached a couple of teams for three or four years. That's been okay. a lot of fun. So that's usually where we're out of town yeah. on weekends. Um, wish we didn't have to go out of town all the time to do that. That's yeah. trouble with living on an <laughs> island, right? right? Right. Even though we're inland, we're kind of an island out in the For middle sure. of nowhere. For sure. Yeah. Three hours to anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, let's shift gears unless there's something else you want to bring up on any of those things that we were at. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, you, you've had a, had a pretty unique career path, which is pretty cool and you've traveled a lot and stuff like that. So I'm sure you've picked up some pretty neat insights to, to business and just life principles. And, you know, you've got a wife that's from another culture, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. <laughs> Even though sure. we're all, you know, you know <laughs> Americans, uh, we, my wife's from Wisconsin and that was a diff that was a culture shock for me mm -hmm. coming from New Mexico. And so I learned a lot through that. What, what are some things that, uh, you know, that you just, you know, that you live by or that you've picked up, you know, and we'll just explore that for a minute. Sure. So when I first moved back to Roswell, um, it was real easy. I think if you've ever been in a big town for a while to kind of come back and say, you know, what is this podunk? You can't even yeah. get a good steak or whatever it is, you know, that right. you're wanting to do. And, uh, so for probably the first couple of years that I was living here, that was a real, like, I think I was real negative on the okay. town. And people really were upset, you know, around me because I was yeah. like, well, in Colorado Springs, we had this, you know, and it's like, shut up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and But it took a while for me to kind of figure out that, well, if you really want to be that change, you need to kind of start getting involved and do it. Okay. And Roswell's That's actually good. unique in that area because um, if you're interested and want to make a change, you can. Yeah. Uh, in, in a bigger town, if you want to make a change, you're just a small drop in a big ocean. Interesting. You know, here, you've got point. a little bit better chance to actually kind of influence things. So um, that maybe started with uh, around 2014, I think, was the year I went to the leadership Roswell. Yeah, I think you were the year behind me. Yeah, and so I always kind of thought that was kind of a, a hokey deal. And then you joined the board. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, whatever. Leadership Roswell. Okay, fine. I'll try okay. it. And really so, enjoyed it. So that it. was literally your, your yeah. thought was, uh, I got to do this. <laughs> yeah, kind of, you know, and, and, you know, all the cool kids are doing it, so I'll try yeah. it. Okay. And uh, it turned out to be a really good experience. I think Rick does a good job with the program. Yeah. He does a good job also of getting different people in the program, so from different industries. And so it kind of gives you a cross-pollination of ideas. Right. And to this day, I still call people up and say, you know, I need help with this, and maybe that's their expertise. And yeah. kind of stem back from that deal. So that did a good job for me of kind of turning my eyes open to, hey, you can make a difference in Roswell. And then so... Uh, went on and did the Leadership New Mexico deal, which is also a fantastic program. I haven't, I haven't been able to to make the time to run that, but I've sure heard such amazing things. It does take a lot of time, for sure. I mean, it's a year-long deal. Um, but, again, great people um, for one of our deals there. I mean, you're literally meeting with some of the, you know, the top people. And, uh, you know, we flew from uh, Urenco, has a big deal out in Eunice. Right. And so uh, we got on the company for those jet. Those don't know that's the uranium enrichment. It's the uranium plant. enrichment, right? Yeah. It's a giant facility, and uh, we got to use their company jet to fly to the deal in Farmington. Wow! So the first time I'd ever been on a corporate jet. Wow, that's know? pretty cool. Like, yeah, I can yeah. be used to this. Right, right. <laughs> Dodson might need a branded plane here in Roswell here soon. It'd probably fly to Oklahoma City. Uh, <laughs> that's all it would do. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we still have ties to Oklahoma. Uh, for okay. sure. My sister lives in Oklahoma City, and okay, yeah, we're. Uh, Oklahoma State baseball and football fans, so we're so down there all the time. Whenever you need your tornado fix, you just go up there right, and right. spend some time. Right, <laughs> I saw a few when I was there, yeah. for sure. Um, but anyway, get back to what we were talking about. You know, So I really think that you know you can make a difference in Roswell, yeah. and, and that's kind of been a focus since that class in 2014. Interesting. That was um, the turning point. How cool yeah, is that? Probably. So there you go. Good, good plug for Leadership Roswell. I think they do good things there. So It's funny how easily we 
I know you and I have talked about this before, how easily we can get onto the negative of things. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that there's anything wrong with that, except if you stay there. Recognizing a right. negative is okay if you can bring, like you said, there's so many positive change. things about yeah. Roswell. Um, just to give you an example, and I tell this to my wife every now and then, it's like, you remember when you used to spend three hours in the car every day, hour and a half each direction right. to commute just a little bit? It's like, uh -huh. you haven't done that, you know? Now yeah. the airport's 20 minutes away and it's like, oh, I gotta leave, you know, <laughs> day yeah. early to get there, but it's yeah. only 20 minutes away. Or you and hear that, people all the time, I gotta drive out to Walmart. Right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it has its own negative connotations, I guess. But uh, yeah. yeah, with uh, 20 minutes used to be the standard deal in Colorado Springs. I mean, yeah. if you had to go anywhere, it was 20 yeah. minutes minimum yeah and so you know that doesn't happen here life is slowed down a little bit and that's a good thing so well look at how much i i noticed this you know living in dallas all those years traffic time that's gained back mm -hmm. um all the other things that you're able to be a part of you know the the things that you're contributing to the city the boards that you're on or have been on or whatever it was made it much more difficult in a bigger city, just like you said, just because of the time it took to get anywhere, mm -hmm. um, which is incredible. So what what kind of things are you doing now? You know, you had that shift in 2014. Um, what did that shift do for Steve and how you function in this city now? What's What, what are you up to? Well, so it kind of just made me think that, you know, hey, you can actually make a difference here. Yeah. If you, you know, just get involved. Um, I don't want to get involved in the politics much yeah. because that's not what I am good at. Um, Understood at me all. either. I, I, it makes me angry. <laughs> I've had some taste of it, and it's, it's not yeah. been it's not been good. So you know, I want to try to stay away from some of that stuff. But uh, yeah. same time, so the little league, for instance, you know, I think we've done good things with the little league since since I've been involved. Um, I'm on the board at the EDC, and the EDC is really trying to do for those that maybe so, don't know what that is. Roswell Chavez County Economic Development. Okay. Right, and so um, they're really trying to focus on bringing jobs into the into the region and growing yeah. this region, and then retaining the jobs that are here. Yeah, uh, people like uh, the Fulkersons or the Dotsons who have their kids grow up and go to Colorado Springs or to Dallas. Yeah, come back, you know, and stay in in this area because there's there's quality of life here. Yeah, and there really is. So the quality of life issues, I think, are some things that I'm really interested at the moment. Uh, I've been in discussions with some of the. The city leaders about keeping about maybe having some some ballparks put in out Sierra Grande. Yeah. So everyone doesn't have to leave from Roswell to go to Hobbs for the weekend. Maybe we can have Hobbs come here. You can actually host the events. Right. Yeah. And so get a little sports tourism going and get uh, you know raise the the quality of life for the yeah, people yeah. that are here. Um, I think that a lot of changes have been made actually even recently on that just with the aquatic center and you know some things like that roswell is starting to modernize I think. yeah yeah um i've really noticed that in the last 10 years i was gonna say it's been this last decade after i moved mm -hmm. back that's about how we've just been here a little over eight eight years you can pay your water bill online now you know yeah, that yeah. used to be a standard deal you know yeah, in Colorado, still had so. to go hand deliver it right and right i remember when we moved back it was just whoa um but what does that look like you know here you are uh, helping out with economic development for a small town on an island, the landlocked. You know, yeah. what do you guys do? You know, what's what's some of your analytical processes of how do we garner attention for business and for industry? Right. How do we bring value to our right, membership? Right. For one thing, that's that's been a big focus recently. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's not uh, a simple deal, but you know, we've looked at uh, concierge service to to have uh, say doctor wants to come look here. Usually, you can sell a doctor to the area. Yeah. but you can't sell the wife because there's no shopping, right? Understood. So maybe yeah. we could come up with a way to kind of sell the wives on, on, on this area. Like my wife wasn't really excited about moving here sure. you know, to start with. Uh, so um, that that needs to be a focus uh, for the EDC is trying to to keep family members here. So that, that falls under the retention yeah. things to draw them here and then keep them here. In the Amazon age, is that helping? I think so, actually, because I think we're getting less isolated, actually. Yeah. Um, it used to be the highways were the only way out. Now we have the air. Yeah. air uh, so we're looking at the thing to Denver. You know, that'd be huge. Yeah. Phoenix already, yeah, Dallas opens already. Up here shortly. Yeah, yeah. So we've got other avenues to get out. You can go to Denver to do your shopping. Yeah. And you can do shopping on Amazon. Right. And still have the quality of life that I think is... I think it's Roswell's greatest asset. And yet we still have uh, some nice mom and pop 
curio shops and things here for when you need those items that absolutely are at, yeah yeah so you know even those uh, the businesses downtown trying to keep that uh, the EDC has a, a, a big kind of a sign grant thing going on where they give money to help improve the signage so when I first moved here a lot of the signs downtown were right. cardboard yeah mostly you know or yeah. paper mache or something that's really improved a ton I think yeah. downtown Main Street looks a lot better than it used to yeah, I tell people all the time, a little bit of paint, a little bit of sweeping of a broom, and a little bit of an updated uh, sign can go. Yeah, signs are huge. Can do miles for your business. And really the alien thing is is huge. Um, I mean, we kind of roll our eyes at it here, you know. But I think the only people that uh, are frustrated with it are the people. <laughs> the that people that grew up here, right? Yeah. yeah and they, they say, even everyone our lampposts, you know. And like, everyone else is like, look at the lamppost, you know, these right, are great. Right, So um, I think most towns would would kill for that tourism draw, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other than say maybe the balloon fiesta, fiesta. What what draws like, you know, what has that name recognition like Roswell? Right. In the state. Right. So, I always say, and we don't even have to pay for that branding. I know. <laughs> so I'm always uh, looking for ways. How do we capitalize on that? How do we how do we use that? Um, and and run with it so uh you're involved with that um you still do stuff with leadership roswell i know i stepped off the board a few no years i haven't ago. done as much uh, with yeah. them um every now and then you know try to help them with uh, the online access stuff so yeah. uh we we were able to put that uh enrollment deal online so yeah i remember you know, when you in instituted that and were able to take your programming and understanding of all that and really help so about them. once a year i kind of help with that nice and, you know when so they when people are submitting their applications cool. but that's about it so. yeah yeah what are some other things business wise you uh you you take very good pride and care i noticed when i because i'm doing some work uh through your business right now as well um but the atmosphere is everyone i meet and talk to is always positive always good energy um uh, they clearly love what they're doing. So you guys are doing something right in that zone. What have you seen or learned that has helped foster that type of a culture? Well, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for saying that because that makes us feel good. You know, that we've, we do feel like we have a really good team yeah. and, uh, you know, there's been times where it's been less so, but I think we're really happy with the group that we have. Um, part of it is a lot of the people we hire, most of the people we hire, they're like, they're dedicated to living in Roswell as well. Okay. So, you know, they're not looking for a quick go somewhere. It's they're career oriented and we're the career. Yeah. And so we want to invest in that. Um, so we've got uh, like you, you, you met some of our, our younger guys, uh, Cody. Yeah. And he's been working on on this uh, project. We're trying to to really highlight some of our panel product, uh -huh. uh, which which has kind of been a, a hard thing to sell for a while because it's complicated. Yeah. And so trying to come up with a, a set of videos and things to kind of demystify that product and mm -hmm. then it you know it has many applications so uh we're trying you know doing that little project there um we've got uh most of our guys have been with us for a very long time so 30 40 years you know that uh so what what have you what have you found that creates that type of a longevity because uh, let, let's say that i'm a uh independent business person out there and I, maybe i've struggled with creating that type of a chemistry and an atmosphere that, uh, that that you guys are winning at you know right. what are what are some practical things that you've you know seen and realized ooh wow keep doing that mm -hmm. well i think uh i think a lot of that starts with with, with what my dad's done okay um so um he's he's kind of always had a a christian approach to this business and he wants to have people that uh and we say it in just about every interview you know we want guys that come and work hard during the week and then they're not off partying on the weekend, you know, and it's, um, it's just kind of a philosophy we've had with hiring. Okay. And I think it's really worked out. Uh, we've got a lot of family oriented people. Okay. And uh, we've always, you know, tried to say that if, if you take care of us, we take care of you. And I think that's been something that we've done a good job at. And so I think that fosters longevity. You yeah. know, you start with the right type of family oriented people yeah. and uh, you grow together as a company. So nice. What about uh, on the practical business side, not necessarily the people side? Um, if you were able to give, you know, one, two uh, really strong points to somebody that's aspiring to have a company that lasts over fifty years, right? Yeah. Um, 
So uh, we didn't even know this. Uh, we were working with Focus on the Family on some different trust items and so forth. And they said, I guess the 80% of companies don't make it to three generations. Right. Right. And so this, we're the third or you could say fourth lumber generation in our family that have done this. Yeah. And so we're kind of on that point where a lot of companies, the, the sons or daughters that are coming up behind them say, it's not worth it. Let's fold up and sell to somebody. Yeah. And so we're not operating under that at all. You know, okay. we're really trying to continue this, um, our, our company um, going forward. I mean, we don't want to sell to the big box. Okay. And so that's been kind of a, a focus for us is that we enjoy being a little bit more nimble and agile okay. than the big box companies that we're competitors with. And so the big guys come in and they have all their corporate policies and their mm -hmm. rules and everything else of which we don't have yeah. hardly any. Uh, it's getting more and more. I don't think you can avoid it altogether. Um, but we are a lot more nimble than the competition in that. And so we kind of enjoy having our own little, this is this region is, is Dawson Lumbers, really, yeah. um, where everyone else is Warehouser and, and all the other big you know, n national chains. They haven't really been able to penetrate this market. So what have you found uh, in order for you to be able to consistently compete? Um, you know, because... You know, you, you've got the independent business mindset, but you've also been around long enough, so you have some stability. The, the stability is, and it also comes with, you know, people trust us, I think. And so we have to kind of have a way to to bring value. Wholesaling is, uh, it's very low margin. Um, hopefully it's high volume, low margin. Uh, we'd like a higher margin, but- So you're saying a relationship then? Relationship is a huge part of okay. it. Okay. And uh, so we still do a lot of stuff by phone. Wow. Even though it's going towards uh, email, yeah. And, you know, just kind of this uh, sterile system where really uh, we do better when we're able to talk to our customers okay. regularly. So, you know, relationship building there is very important. And again, if, you're, if your salesman's been your salesman for 30 years, you know, he has been with that company since probably the, the guy founded the thing. Um, so if we sell to a, cu a cu customer, say Higginbotham, right, the, um, the guy that started that knows my salesman. Wow. No matter how many managers they've run through in that yeah. time that my salesman has been there for 30 years, yeah. you know, they still know Steve's been their guy forever, you know? So it's been kind of a cool deal there. Nice. Um, yeah. Longevity is so important. I was going to say, I'm hearing you say, play the long game. Yeah. And not, uh, not just build a good name and play the long okay. game. Yeah. That'd be interesting. That makes sense. Um, cause I, you know, we're seeing a lot of, you know, it's been the popular thing for the last five, six, seven years, you know, to be an entrepreneur. And those of us that are, uh, we tell you don't, <laughs> <laughs> um, do. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're made for it. But the point is don't just chase a fad, mm -hmm. you know, you better be made for it. You better understand these things. And then, you know, cause it's business is hard, whether you've been around for 50 years or, uh, you're just starting out. Um, what uh, what about just practical for the the businessman mindset? Um, what's what's your mantra? What's what's Man, the thing that you go to? I'm, I'm not probably the best uh, business mindset guy. I, you know, I don't read a lot of business books. I yeah, I listen to economic podcasts. That's for, that's my kind of fun. But yeah, um, you know, I don't I don't necessarily have any great business advice for well, you. How do you? I guess where I'm headed there is how do you keep yourself? in the positive place because you said you transitioned from being right. negative minded to a positive minded deal what is it that when you feel yourself gravitating towards that what what do you do to to recenter yourself well i love coming into work i you know i love our team okay. honestly um even the the problems that we have at work uh are minor deals and they're always something we can work on to get through um, we just don't have this negative environment so i'd say maybe Foster a very positive work environment. Okay. And and that's uh, that seems to go a long way towards and keeping everyone. Quit sitting still, get to work. <laughs> get to do something. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to sleep you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. at work. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but, you know, work hard when you're there. So yeah, it's good. It's good. I think uh, I think we don't talk about that enough. That uh, a mentor of mine over the past year, uh, the summation of it was, you know, action begets action. Hmm. And if you don't, if you don't have motivation, start doing something and you'll get motivated. Um, it's not something that just arrives. And I'm hearing you say the same thing right there is. Some of the stuff we've been uh, looking at to incorporating here is uh, kind of the lean philosophy. And so, you know, uh, that was real big when I was traveling around, people did lean and they did the, 
Uh, Kanban was another deal. Okay. And I think some of that, uh, some of the lean stuff has been really, really good for us. Um, it's, uh, it's always a continual improvement process. Yeah. And so you'll find, you'll identify some waste somewhere. And uh, for a lot of people, it's inventory or uh, maybe your, your forklifts are going too far every day. You're, you know, you're spending too much time getting to and from products. So how do you move product closer so your forklifts don't travel as mm -hmm. much? Um, there's a ton of things like that, but one of the things that they really stress is the continuous improvement. Okay. So you get a project and you come up with an idea and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but let's improve on that. And you know, four or five iterations later, you think you might still be there, but there's still improvements that can be made. Yeah. And so that continuous cycle, I think is something that's been really good uh, for us as well with, with projects that we have and keep improving, you know, revisit. Is this really working like we thought it would work? Right. So. Well, as we uh, start to head into uh, the wrapping up of this episode, and by the way, again, thank you for spending time and, and giving us a little bit of insight into who you are and what makes you tick, as well as, you know, just a, a neat a neat industry that provides so much that I think a lot of times, I know I do, take for granted mm -hmm. the fact that this house that we're sitting in, you mm -hmm. know, was people like yourself that was making sure that, that we were provided for. Um, what have we talked on or didn't talk on or when you had thought about, you know, man, I'm coming on to this podcast. I'd really like to share this that maybe we didn't touch on. Well, thank you for bringing me on. You know, this is like, I might be the most uninteresting person you have in the whole deal. So I'm really looking forward to watching <laughs> the rest of them so that, uh, you know, I can see, see some other people. But I'm glad that you're doing this, um, honestly, because I really am interested in, in hearing from other people in yeah. town, you know. So it's a great... Great deal. So I thank you. Of course, yeah. That, no, I'm. I get the I get the privilege spot of yeah. sitting here every time <laughs> and you know digging out things. So let's say people would like to somehow connect with you, your business, things like that. How do they go about that? What's what's the means? So okay, so our website is dotsonlumber.com, and uh, my email is s dotson at dotsonlumber.com. Okay. We actually have a little chat feature now, so it's something we're pioneering. So chat oh, with fun. us. Yeah, if you've got a question. Um, we'll answer questions about products that we sell. Um, so we don't have to just be something that we sell to you, you know, yeah. um, we'd like you to buy it from Foxworth or McCoy's or Mays or someone in town, Sure. but we'll help you with that product with that decision too. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have some cool stuff coming up, hopefully That's some neat. videos and so forth on paneling products. Right. Um, you know, the chip and Joanna show, uh, right. we've got our own chip yep. and Joanna hopefully yep, coming yep. up here. So very excited about be that. Fun to see too. And I, I think it's. I always love stuff like that. I think we all do. I think that's why there's so many uh, shows on uh, networks and things that cause we just kind of binge watch that. I'm gonna ship lap all you know, the how things. To, how to do things. <laughs> Very few of us do it. Right. But right. we love the idea of what that might be, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, cool. Um, so yeah, so they, they can catch you on the website and interact with you guys as well. Um, again, Thank you so much. Appreciate what you're doing in our community and what you uh, bring to the table and for committing to our city and, and its success. Um, I'm, I'm like you, I, I believe in the, the future of what can be done here and hopefully a lot more people will tap this gold mine. It's a great place to live. It yeah. really is. And more people just need to, to know that, I think. But yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm very, very excited about uh, living here, Wonderful. making it a better place. So, Well, I think that'll do it. And uh, until next time. All right, thanks, Donovan. Yeah. <laughs> If you like today's program, subscribe to the format you are on, whether it be YouTube or a podcast channel. If you'd like to connect with me, go to DonovanFulkerson.com. It has details about myself, our companies, and how to connect. If you're following our social media, my personal pages, well, it's just that. It has a lot of personal things, including spiritual content and the details that uh, I find interesting to me. Our social accounts for our businesses, obviously, is that. There will be products and day-to-day -day activities and things that relate to those specific companies. Thank you for connecting. Please share and get the word out. We'll see you next time.